So I get a lot of questions or we get a lot of questions as integrators that, uh, you know, why, if I use Control 4, can I use Sonos to power my speakers? What if I already have some Sonos speakers? The word on the street is that the Sonos integration is pretty bad with a lot of the control systems on the market, but I'd like to actually show you how it works in my own home. And I think it actually works quite well. With Control 4, one of the key things that you can do is use some of the touch screens, the touch panels. And I have one of the wireless touch screens here in my home. I'll show you really quickly. So this is in my kitchen area. And I'll show you how that works with Sonos. My Sonos in the kitchen is this little guy, just the Sonos One. Um, and quite simple, I actually have Sonos in the backyard, I have Sonos in the living room doing my surround sound system. And I use control for touchscreens, the remote, and uh, integration with my lighting. And I'll show you a few of those things. So why don't we compare first um, how I would normally use a without a control for environment, how I would use Sonos. So here we've got Sonos S2. It's going to pop open my rooms and I'm going to go into the kitchen and then I'm going to hit play. So if I want to select a different artist, I can search for it. But basically one of the things that's key in managing your Sonos is figuring out your favorites. So this little star icon here, I'll just show you playlists, songs, stations. So the stations, I have three stations and I listen to XM in the car, I listen to XM at home. And uh, if you can see here, I'm gonna change it over to CBC Radio. up a little bit and hit stop. Actually, one of the things I forgot to show you was what happens in Control 4 while you're using the Sonos app. So it's actually an interesting thing to look at. So let's try to see if we can see both of them right here. So I um, recently just paused the music and it was on CBC. So let me hit play again. And there you can see my touchscreen in Control 4 is actually, whoops, now it's gone to sleep but it's showing in the kitchen, it's playing CBC radio. So I can adjust the volume immediately. I can actually still group it with other zones. So if I wanna keep, group it with my living room, you'll be able to hear that shortly once it groups. And let's crank up the volume a bit. Grouping integration works really well. And go back into my phone app. And I'm gonna show you my password, obviously. And I'm gonna hit stop. And you can see that the Sonos will then stop on the Control 4 touchscreen. It's actually uh, ready to play, but it's showing what was last played there. There we go. Now it's off. So that's the integration with Sonos through the Sonos app. Now let's look at the integrate or the direct access through control. So now the morning routine, if I want to play CBC radio, um, I would actually just come into the kitchen. The touchscreen's obviously on and I would just hit Sonos and figure out my favorite. So if I go to my favorite, I want to hit CBC radio. There we go. And it turns on. I think you can hear that. But. Like the Halopini, eerie creatures if I want to stop it, great. So if I actually want to play music outside <clears throat> in the backyard, again, we have Sonos out there as well. Just switch to the backyard, listen, and Sonos on the patio. Let's play some lithium for the neighbors. It's cranked up to 50. Let's add the kitchen to that. So you can see the grouping and easy access. So now I have two zones open. It shows me which two zones. Adjust my volume for my kitchen. And I'm going to ungroup the outside. So now it shows me nothing's playing in the backyard. But if I go back into my kitchen, It's playing lithium stuff. And just hit stop. So that's the Sonos integration with Control 4.